Hit Object Guru with some video games I sampled recently. As always, the score out of 10 is how interested I am in playing more of them in the future. Blacksmith Legends. This management sim puts players in control of the owner of a small town smithy. This involves building a workspace, hiring a blacksmith, and taking on orders to generate revenue. It's easy enough to get started, but sadly it doesn't do a great job of explaining its systems. And more importantly, it doesn't offer a particularly interesting setting or gameplay compelling enough to keep players coming back. I mean, if I'm gonna have to micromanage the process so much, why not just let me actually do the blacksmithing? At least then I'd be doing something other than watching numbers slowly go up. 3 out of 10. Blacksmith Simulator. This first-person blacksmithing game puts players in control of a smith working in a small hut in the middle of the woods. When his father is called away to perform duties for the local government, the main character has to take his place, learning the craft on the job. There are mini-games for stoking furnaces, melting down ingots, and hammering hot metal into shape. While it may look a little on the rough side, it plays quite well, and even goes so far as to have a story mode to keep things interesting. The clunky inventory system proved a little frustrating, as did a bug that occasionally kept objectives from registering when completed. Still, this was a fun little simulator with a bunch of promise to it. 6 out of 10. Instruments of Destruction This vehicle building sim has some of the most satisfying physics-based destruction I've ever seen. The player loads up an island, they're given an assignment to destroy a certain part of it, and a budget to build the truck that can get the job done. Shovel blades, buzz saws, rotating maces, the player can kit the vehicle out any way they want, either building the trucks from scratch or modifying the game's default machines. There's over 10 islands with multiple objectives to complete and plenty of odd vehicles to unlock. Sometimes it's a little unclear exactly how to complete missions. Trial and error generally got the job done. A truly satisfying experience. 8 out of 10. Dr. Professor Scientist's Weapons Testing Facility. This base defense game has a bizarre and compelling premise. Waves of enemies crawl towards a cannon that's endlessly swinging back and forth. The player's only job is to place weapons into the loading chamber and press start. The cannon cycles through the loading chamber every couple of seconds, firing in the order the weapons have been placed. It's down to luck whether those weapons hit anything, of course, although the player can increase their odds by adding more weapons and mods to the chamber. After they're dropped by defeated enemies, naturally. It's a simple gameplay loop. The player keeps tweaking the cannon's loadout until they're overwhelmed, then they start over having unlocked new and better random drops for the next run. It's simple, passive, and surprisingly addictive. 6 out of 10. Meteo Heroes. This Airsats Captain Planet game pits an array of kid superheroes against pollution and natural disasters. Players' sides scroll their way through levels, battling robots and grabbing toxic barrels. It's obviously intended for an audience of children, so don't expect too much of a challenge. But it's bright and pleasant enough. Not my thing, but clearly not bad. 5 out of 10. Gladia. This one almost got dropped into an NSFW video because of the game's odd decision to put nude women in the audience of the arena that the game's fights take place within. There's a button to censor the nudity, though, and since this is primarily about gladiatorial combat, I felt it belonged here. Gladia is largely a mess. The story mode is so threadbare that it barely exists. The fighting is almost criminally bad. There seems to be no clear connection between pressing an attack button and the attack actually happening. Blocking and dodging are somehow even worse. Literally, the only thing the game has going for it is a surprisingly charming dismemberment mode. I can't hazard a guess as to how it works, but when the player lands a certain kind of killing blow, the game calculates the plane by which the hit should have bisected the enemy, and dynamically splits the enemy's model along that line. It's unrealistic, disgusting, and absolutely beautiful. If only it was contained within a better game. 2 out of 10. Barn Finders VR. I'd already played Barn Finders on the channel, so I knew what I was getting into with this one and was mostly concerned with how smoothly it controlled in virtual reality. Luckily, there was nothing to worry about. Movement works like a charm, there are ample options for picking things up at a distance without having to crouch, turn, or reach too far if your VR setup is on the restrictive side. And the core gameplay, scouring barns to find wacky treasures that you sell on to roofs, hasn't been changed in the least. It's every bit as good a game as the flat version was, although, as always, moving it into VR just makes a good thing better. 7 out of 10. That's it for this week. I've been the Hidden Object Guru. Thanks for watching. If you hadn't yet, please like and subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons, Marissa, Eduardo, Brian, and Joanne. I'll see you back here once I've played some more games, but until then, au revoir.